currency. Real currency is wisdom, revelation, and faith. That's real currency. Dollars are just a manifestation of your wisdom. You know that? How many know that the world wants to control finances? Because they know that if they control finances, they control you. And I, I just watched a video this morning, kind of interesting. Uh, the World Bank says, let's get out one one and a half, no, $103 trillion into the world economy. Because if we can put everybody in debt, we own them. How many know that uh, the borrower is servant to the lender? You really don't own your house unless it's paid for. My cars are paid for, and I own those, and I have control over them. But when the crash came in 2008, I lost a house. I thought I owned it. I built it. Put all my money into I put a lot of money into it, a hundred and some thousand dollars I put into it, but I still lost it. Because I, the bank owned it. I didn't. And when the bank wanted to take over, they did. But we were able to short sale it. We didn't go into, what do they, what do they call it, uh, where they take over without your volunteering in, yeah, repossession. But uh, we, we short sold it. But we, and we have a nice home now. God re, refurbished everything. But I told my wife, let's get everything paid for as soon as we can. I believe that debt is not biblical. Except our debt to the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen except our debt to the blood of Jesus. Now, how many know there's, uh, there's a shaking going on? We've talked about it here before, and there's nothing new about that, but I believe God wants us to refresh our mind before Dr. Harold Wolf comes, comes on. on. Uh, there's a building and shaking of the world system. So put in the notes there, building and shaking of the world system. The final rise of the world system and the Antichrist is coming. You know that was prophesied in the Bible? We can't stop that. There's no way we can stop what the Antichrist is going to do in this earth because that fulfills prophecy. So we know that some tough days are coming for the world. So the final rise of the world system is, is a pro prophecy that God says will happen. So well, as we watch that, how many know we don't have to be a part of that? We don't have to be a part of it. And I see a blindness right now on world leaders. They're making stupid decisions because they don't have the wisdom of Christ. They don't have the mind of Christ. So what, what we have is, is a blindness. For example, the wars that we have financed. Do you know we spent a trillion dollars in Iraq and Afghanistan? That came out of our pockets, folks. And what did we end up with? We're now hiring the Taliban to go in and fight Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> Those are the ones that we tried to defeat for a trillion dollars. Is that stupid or what? Is war stupid? This whole Ukraine thing is stupid. It's lucrative. Well, of course, it is. So I'm going to say some things that are going to stimulate a little bit this morning because some of you are on target with this stuff. But I'll tell you what, we're in the middle of a lot of dumb leadership. Excuse me. Don't take me off Facebook. But there's a lot of stupid decisions. All this thing in Ukraine has done is, is drive uh, a lot of people to their grave. We've killed a lot of Ukrainians. And by the way, uh, you were in Ukraine, weren't you, Jesse? And uh, weren't some of the largest churches in, in the world there? Correct. The uh, Messianic community. The Messianic. Uh, and, and also the Spirit-filled. Uh, a Spirit-filled. How large are those churches there? Uh, I think the Messianic Jews are about 3,000. Oh, 3,000. That's a good size for a Messianic Jewish. Okay. And the other church was thousands as well. Yes. So uh, that whole thing has been devastated by this war. This is a terrible war. And I don't know how you feel about the war, but I'll, can I give you my take on it? Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's to, to several things. One, I believe it's to drive us into war to destroy our economy, number one. 
You know, either our, our government is so stupid they don't know what they're doing or they're doing it on purpose. And if they're doing it on purpose, they want to destroy America. It's as simple as that. So all this, and, and then number two, the unlimited printing of dollars. Two trillion dollars was forced into the economy, which has led us now to inflation. When, when dollars become more available than products, you have inflation. That's exactly what's happened. They've infused the economy with two trillion dollars just the last couple of years, and now we've got inflation. I mean, there's other things that are stupid decisions. And, they, and then there's the globalization of the pandemic. Yeah. I personally feel this was a test run of the Antichrist. To see how many nations could be controlled by a virus that you couldn't even see. Would you believe there was control of the whole world? We had shutdowns of campuses that just recently opened up after two and a half years in some countries. I thought America was bad, but nothing compared to what some of these nations have suffered. Some countries have really, really suffered under bad leadership. But I believe all this is part of a darkness that God talked about in Isaiah 60. Arise, shine your what? Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Say, God's glory is on me. When I walk down the street, His glory is shining around me. I carry His color. I think the Spirit has colors. I think we all have different colors. I, I believe we carry an aura of God's glory. Amen? Amen. When you enter a room, the, the presence of God enters with you. The glory of the Lord shines. But look at the next verse. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. They're walking in darkness. It's like they're blind. I'm no great economist, I'm no great politician, but I, I can see so plainly some things that are happening right now in our country, our government, our leadership, that anybody can see. What in the world is going on? Well, we know it's a large plan to the enemy to blind the eyes of them that believe not. Like I see, the greatest currency in your life is wisdom, revelation, and faith. Yes. That's your currency. Because you know what's going to happen? What, let me ask you, the class here a few questions. What, if, if a real bad recession happens, what's going to be almost the number one thing that's going to be demanded? Food. Food is going to be our great currency in the future. And I, I tell you, I'm just, can I share a little bit of the plan I feel God's given kingdom yes, life? Yes. I know you say, Jerry, can this really be true? I feel it is. And we've been talking about it for 10 years. It's called Kingdom Communities. Yes. Kingdom Communities built around red barns with enough homes for them to harvest the Moringa crops in 200 acres. Yes. So each 200 acres can be a Moringa farm with small homes. We don't have to have large homes. But make sure they're all paid for. You know, we don't need to live in a 5,000 square foot home. If you have one, be blessed and enjoy it. But I'll tell you what, if, if we can have small, concise farms that are very well regulated and organic. Yes. So I, I want you to help me because I talked to Roger about this when I was over at uh, the river. He has Eden over there. He calls it Eden. It's a one acre tent. I think I shared a little bit. And after the first of the year, we're going to go into our agricultural part of Kingdom Life University. Amen? We're going to start our agriculture division here. And I've talked to Nancy about it. Roger's going to come over and teach. He sold a huge organic operation up north, came down and set up this Eden tent. And I shared with him what our vision was for all the citrus farms between Tampa and Miami. 100,000 acres sitting there rotting in citrus plants that they can't find a solution for the citrus. Do you know that five years ago, we sent out 253 million bushels of oranges out of Florida? Five years ago, we sent out 253 million bushels of oranges out of Florida. You know how many bushels we sent out last year? 23 million. 
So the, the, the citrus crop in, in Florida is disintegrated. It's gone. But, and you know one of the problems is you can't plant a lot in, these, in this soil because this soil is polluted. But Jesse, I want you to come up a minute because I want you to talk about Moringa in the Philippines. I don't know of any country of the world that does better with Moringa. Do you, you pronounce it Moringa or Moringa? What do you, what do you call it? Moringa? Moringa. Moringa? Moringa. Come on up a minute. Because you have, you have a little farm over there and you have Moringa plants on it, right? Yes. Yeah, can you just share about the Moringa plant and how sturdy it is? Yeah, Moringa is, uh, they categorize it as a super food. You know, it's a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrition that uh, they also can convert that to a powder. You know, you could buy that in the grocery in California, a Moringa powder. It is an amazing product. The people don't even realize it. In our farm, we have about a five hectare farm in the Philippines. We have this uh, Moringa in our farm and we use that to mix it to the vegetable, boy, you feel strong, even to the newly uh, mother that, that delivered the baby. This is a very good nutritional food. So, yes, and I'm very glad that uh, Kingdom Life University will be uh, going through an agriculture ministry or, you know, in the last day, they that have a, they had a farm has the goal. That's it. You know, they, the old saying is that they that have a goal will, will uh, uh, right, right. But actually, the real goal right now will be food. Because in the book of Revelation, you know, I was born again in 1970s during the uh, hippie, Jesus hippie generation. They yes, call it yeah, the yeah. Uh, Jesus uh, movement. Uh, I remember that also that says, uh, uh, you cannot buy a piece of bread, it will cost you a bag of gold yeah. to buy a piece of bread. Yeah, so yeah. which is important, the bread or gold? You cannot eat gold, okay, right? Eat gold. I have a lot of gold to give away anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll but right now we can enjoy it, right? right. And, but the bread is the future, you know. Food is the amazing because Jesus said in Matthew 24, in the last days there will be famine, pestilence. Yes, yes. People will have no food to eat. All the good land are becoming uh, what they call housing. housing. Yes, they they. Uh, a lot of population right now. So food is a very good uh, end time ministry to, to feed the people. So I go for it. May the Lord bless you as you acquire you. hundreds of land here in Florida for the Moringa. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time. It's time to prepare for what's coming on the earth. Yes. And you know between... Would you stretch your hand out right now to South Florida? Everybody in the room, come on, let's just pray. Father, we claim that 100,000 acres that's laying there dormant, that not, nobody, they can't sell it because they can't grow any citrus on it. We claim that land, Father, for the glory of the kingdom and raise up developers, raise up farmers, raise up builders, raise up people that understand how to do this. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And we pray that a whole thing between... Tampa and Miami could feed all of America in a crisis, Father. So we claim that land in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. You agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. See, Jerry, you're just a little nothing out here. Well, we're kingdom kids. Hello? Um, yes. We're kingdom kids. Come on. God can take an idea, so pray for us as we approach uh, DeSantis about this here in Florida. And we're going to ask the government to clear the land. They say that the current deteriorating citrus crop is ruining the remaining citrus plants. They want them out of there. And I've checked, I've called the local uh, a realtor that's down in my area, and he says a lot of farms for sale. You can pick them up for a really good price right now. So hallelujah, come on. Yes. The greatest currency of the kingdom is... What is it? Gold. Wisdom is, what about in the Old Testament? Who were, who were the ones that were blessed? They were sons of who? Wisdom. Sons of wisdom. Solomon. Solomon, Solomon, and the children of Issachar, right? You know why? Because the children of Issachar understood the what? Times. The times. Thank you. You've got to understand the times we are headed toward a crisis in this world and they that have the food are going to be able to influence for the kingdom of God and win the nations. Hello? Yeah. Anybody with me this morning? Are you with me on this? Right here. 
support us on this. And I don't know how it's all going to happen. God has to put it together. Um, you know, Moses took a rod and opened the sea. I don't know what his rod was worth there. Probably not a whole lot of money. Didn't take a lot to open the sea, did it? So how God can put this together, he'll have to do it. Not only is there the building and shaking of the world system, I'm telling you, this thing is headed towards the cliff. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. Don't depend on your dollars. Don't depend on the wealth that you have in the bank. That may go away very quickly. And we already have inflation. Your dollars are becoming worth less. And all they're doing is propping it up. They're all they're just propping it up. It's just a temporary thing. So we want to get something of value. And that's land and that's food. And that's for the kingdom. Then building and establishing the kingdom of God. The number two point here. It's, it's a rising message. I was over the pastor's meeting yesterday morning. And by the way, thank you for a lot of you were there helping us at our booth. It was awesome. Wasn't it great? Didn't we have a good time over there? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Stephanie was there. And Kim helped. And Socrates and Hadassah drove up with Israel from Miami just to be at the breakfast. And we had an awesome time there yesterday morning. And I got talking with the MC of the whole thing. We had about 600 pastors there with their wives. And uh, uh, the MC of the whole thing, I got talking to him about KLU. And he says, man, we have been praying about starting a school in our church. He said, the Lord told me to build a church first. And it's one of the leading churches in Plant City. And so I went to lunch with him the day before when I went over to set up our booth. And uh, Paul Pickering said, come on to lunch with us. And I got to know this pastor over there. And he says, you know, he said, the thing that I'm so excited about today is the message of the kingdom. And I said, well, that's what we're all about. He said, well, what's the name of your school? I said, Kingdom Life. He said, kid, you got to be kidding. Tell me about it. Tell me a little bit about it. So he said, call me. Let's go out to coffee. Let's see how we can make this happen. Would you pray with me that campuses are now going to start opening up? It's our time. Yes. It's our time. All we need is 10 campuses with 10 students, and we can meet the financial needs of this university. It's all we need. So I believe. I know the devil's fought us. Man, the devil hates what we're doing. By the way, we bless Jake. Yes. You know what? Our goal was to raise $5,000 for his trip to Uganda. You know how much we raised? $5,038. Wow. We sent him over with $4,000 cash in his pocket. And 1000 to take care of his home needs here for Rachel. Is that awesome? Is God faithful? Come on. So it's possible. With just our little group, we were able to put that together. A lot was what Jake did, and we just all worked together on it. And you little came in here, a little there. We put an ad on Facebook, that raised some, and you guys bought the tickets, a ticket for him about three months ago. We took an offering here, I think $1,200 we raised, bought his tickets. So, I mean, it's just awesome the way God blessed. So he's over there right now, actually, in the air. I think he's still in the air. Maybe he's going to land today. And let's just pray for him right now. Father, we pray for Jake as he's over there with, with Charles and representing us in those 23 campuses and churches over there that are affiliated with us that have started called Action Evangelism Churches. And Father, we thank you that we're just going to see a great harvest in that part of Africa. A great harvest, Lord. Bless Jake. Give him wisdom. Give him understanding. Give him revelation. He put together beautiful kingdom messages before he left. And, and Father, thank you that you're raising up him and another generation here at KLU. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Building and establishing the kingdom of God. That's what we're all about. I'm excited. It's the message of the hour. How many times have we quoted this verse? When the gospel of the what? Kingdom is preached in all the world and all dialects. Then the end will come. So let's go do it. And then there's a growing dissatisfaction, I think, for the organized church. I see it all over the place. I talk to people. Well, I used to go to church before the pandemic. And I'm for local churches. I love I like Grace Family. We've been there. We've attended there. We now are in, in a home, home church. I wanted to find out how to establish home churches. So I attended something called One Body. And, and I was going to go one month. That was about six months, seven months ago now. And it's stuck, man. I enjoy this group. We have, there are 15 of us, and we meet in different homes. We are our home once every four weeks. And we just uh, interact with each other and find out about each other's, each other's lives. And uh, it, it's powerful because we meet with people through the week, and it's, it's relational. The church is relational. I love it. And I believe, we're, I believe in a time of real crisis, we're going to come back to home churches. 
That's why I wanted to find out how, how they did it and how it was done. And uh, what they have is wonderful. They have eight home churches here called One Body Churches. And then they have nationally, I think thousands of them internationally now, all over the world, home churches. And essentially what we start in villages through our, our graduates, our home churches. They're just small hut villages, maybe 20, 50, 20 people uh, in, in, in a home church. So I believe there's fresh revelation on how to do church right now. A lot of people are tired of the way it's always been church. When they came back from COVID, they said, you know, I just felt some, something shifted in, in church life. I believe the body of Christ is becoming stronger and more mature and more powerful as we kind of knit together in community. Home churches are community churches. You can literally win all your neighbors through a home church. You know that? If you'd open your house up for a home church and then just go, just go around your neighborhood and invite everybody. And let them come to your house. See, we're going to have, we'll provide you breakfast. Provide a breakfast the first time. And then we have breakfast. We eat together. It's wonderful. We have, and then everybody goes around the room and shares the high point and the low point of their week last week. And if we need to pray for them. So all 15 people are prayed for. And they all 15 give a testimony every week. And it's just, and then we get into the word. We study the word. It's powerful. So I believe there's going to be a rearranging the way churches are done under kingdom. And I'm not against large churches. Let, let them be. God bless them. And a lot of them have small groups. And I think that's important. But I just believe that God's going to rearrange the way churches are being formed today. And then I believe we're going to have a greater uh, focus on the world harvest. I hear it, Socrates. I hear it all the time on the Internet. People are talking about the world harvest like never before. We've got to complete the world harvest. And we've been doing it now for 15 years out there. You know, when Kingdom Life University was started, it was called World Mission Training Center. We didn't come King, become Kingdom Life University until 2008. That's when we made the shift when we were up north there, Stephanie. And, uh, oh, he's calling? Okay. Uh, we'll tell him in about 10 minutes, all right? Oh, he just, did he just call or is he on now? I, I think he checked. Would you, did you tell him that that would be about 15 minutes delayed? You, did you text him on that? Okay, good. I'll just finish this up real quick. Uh, then finally, wealth transfer. How is this going to happen? How's wealth transfer? And Harold's going to be sharing that with us in a moment. You're going to love what he says. He's really got, got it down. He knows what's going on. He's our, by the way, our kingdom business professor here. How many know that Egypt provided Israel quite a bit of gold? Moses told all of Israel, before we leave, ask all the people you've been serving for gold. And you know that in one day, Egypt lost its wealth to Israel. Is that pretty incredible? How many know that gold transfer can happen quickly? Can happen fast. Now, we've been saying it for a long time. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the, for the righteous. Soros, we're going to get his money. Hello, Bill Gates, we're going to get his money. God's going to do this. All that has to happen is the dollar collapses and they're broke. I mean, you know, they're going to have assets because they, Bill Gates now has bought farms across America and different things. They put, he's smart enough to know to put his wealth in land. All right. Practice the principle of prosperity. I believe there are three principles you need to practice right now strongly in your life. Number one is faith. Trust the Lord. Believe what God has for you. Believe it. Faith Everything God does, he operates through faith. And you know, whatever is not a faith is sin. I've had to live by faith so long, I don't know how else to live. I'm living by faith this month. It's the last day of the month. I'm living by faith that something's going to happen today. By faith. I, that's the way I've operated so long. And all I can say is God's faithful. Amen. Any, anybody agree with me out here? You know, faith. God says, walk by faith. I heard a fellow who was talking on the way I just listened to a message that I always do on the way out here on the subject I'm going to speak on just to get additional ideas. And he says, if you, if you ever have to live without faith in your life, it's, 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 it's a mistake. 
Your vision should always be greater than your resources. Amen? You should have a greater vision so you can stretch your faith out. I, when I was in Israel, God says, when you walk by faith, you're already there. So I don't, I don't, I, I just thank God. Thank you, God, that you're providing, that you're, you're taking care of us. This is awesome. And then sowing and reaping. It was such a blessing to give Jake that money. Saturday, I met him Saturday and transferred the money that came in for his trip. I thought, wow, look how much God provided. And it's for missions. It's for world missions. Powerful. My heart is world missions. We give a lot through the university. We believe in it. I remember one time when uh, uh, Daniel McGee was here, we took a nice offering, $1,700, remember? Some of you gave really big to that. He took it over to Rodney Howard Browns and sewed it over there. <laughs> and they gave him $50,000. They took an offering for it. And he was able to buy a brand new car to give away in his, his rally. I thought, wow, now that's generous. Sowing and reaping works. In fact, let me read this scripture. I, I know you know it, but it's, it just refreshes us, that's all. Here it is, 1 Chronicles 29, 12. Both riches and honor come from you, Lord, and you reign over all, and your hand, in your hand is power and might, and your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. But what I was thinking about is, is 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 10. Here it is. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have in a what? What's the, What's the word? word? Say it. May have abundance. abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Even Jesus' righteousness was established on earth through giving. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. The only seed that gets multiplied is what's sown. I believe in that. That's why when things get tight, we give more. Amen? You sow, God will reap. We've been sowing with our university. We have many, many students, never charge them from around the world. I believe that's been a sowing to the nations. And Charles can tell you, man, if you get on our prayer time with him, he says, man, they love the teaching. They love what they're getting. The spirit of Kingdom Life University is getting spread. He just spoke to a whole room of bishops and they never heard the message of the kingdom and he, they were so excited. So excited when they heard it, so. And then finally, trust, trust, all right? Overcoming fear. Why don't we give? You know why we don't give? Because we are afraid that God's not gonna supply at the end of the month. <laughs> he is, he's faithful. So I know that Socrates and I talk a lot about finances because we're kind of both in the same boat. We just live month to month. God takes care of us all the time. And it'll come surprise you. In fact, come up as we close. I want you to share that one testimony of you gave me. Do you remember that one? How God supplied that need recently for you? Uh, <laughs> right, when the, right when the need was there. Do you remember it was some, some bill or something you had to play, pay? Remember the story? I'm trying to recall. What, what, well, just give us one story. One, one story. And then we're going to give the call here. Yes. Uh, one good thing is the Lord supply everything. For everything you need. You need mm -hmm. food, supply the food. Some way supernaturally. Yeah. You need health, supply the health. Because without health, yeah. you know, we cannot really do anything. You know, no matter if you have a lot of food, you can't, if you cannot eat it, you have a stomach problem, what's the food do with <laughs> yeah, you? That's right. This is the way health is the key. Okay, from the kingdom of God, he says, I supply all your needs according to your riches and glory, Christ Jesus. Um, from multimillionaire, I became homeless, you know, and that's a good thing. Because I meet Jesus in yes. the wilderness. That sometimes you go to tough time and you think the devil will take you there. No. no. The Holy Spirit can take you there to teach you how to be overcomer and yes. how to live by faith.